Hi there, my name is Candace Porter and I'm the Executive Director for Connors Klein Foundation. Thank you for joining us to learn more about the work we are doing across New Hampshire and a little bit more about the SOS Signs of Suicide Prevention Program. We're on a mission. Our mission is to provide suicide prevention education to New Hampshire youth and communities. Anytime we're addressing suicide and suicide pre prevention, it's really important to promote self-care. So these two resources are fantastic 24-7 resources. We have the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and the Crisis Text Line. I encourage you to share these resources with your students, your parents, and your faculty anytime you're addressing the topic of suicide. So Connor's Climb was, Foundation was formed after the unexpected death of Connor Ball in 2011 to suicide. His family and friends decided that no one else should experience such a profound and life altering loss. Connor's Klein Foundation is the result of their love of Connor and our commitment to end youth suicide. We are a nonprofit 501c3. We know that suicide is the second leading cause of death for young people between the ages of 10 to 24. But there is good news. Suicide is preventable. So we are raising awareness and working to reduce the stigma around mental health and equipping youth educators and communities with tools and resources to focus on the vulnerable age group of 10 to 24 year olds. We're collaborating with teachers in schools, the public and the mental health system to ensure that young people in New Hampshire have life-saving resources to prevent suicide. So some myths and facts that we dive into when we're doing our larger trainings. You know, it's commonly believed that talking to students about suicide or asking students are suicidal is risky because it might put the idea in their head. But we know that that's not true. In fact, you do not give a suicidal person morbid ideas by talking about it. Research shows that bringing up the subject of suicide and discussing it openly is one of the most helpful things you can do. We also hear people who talk about suicide won't really do it. But we know, in fact, that almost everyone who dies by suicide has given some clue or warning. Do not ignore threats. Work, working to make sure all of our faculty, our parents, our community members are knowing that they need to take statements like, you'll be sorry when I'm dead, I can't see my way out, um, seriously. It may indicate suicidal intent. This is the New Hampshire Youth Risk Behavior Survey. So you can find this through the CDC. And this kind of gives you a snapshot of what anonymously high school students are saying, both in New Hampshire on national level. So we're seeing that almost 30% of our students are saying they felt so sad or hopeless for two or more weeks that they stopped doing some usual activities. And we also know that this is an indicator for depression, which is one of the leading risk factors for suicide. Furthermore, we're seeing 16% considered attempting suicide. And then for New Hampshire, almost 6% said they attempted. And out of that, another 2% resulted in an injury that needed to be treated by a doctor or nurse. As I mentioned, suicide is the second leading cause of death for New Hampshire youth, as well as on a national level. So this breaks down leading causes of death going up from 10 to 65 and older. So what are we offering? We are offering the SOS Signs of Suicide Prevention Program. So this is an annual license valued at $495. And our fundraising, grant making, and partnerships is creating the funds to cover this cost. Our goal is to not make cost a barrier to providing you what you need. We're offering in-person and online SOS suicide prevention trainings. So this can range from a half to full day implementer trainings. Currently, we're doing these remotely, so we're doing them via webinars. We can do one to two hour or more all faculty trainings. So this really falls in line with the legislation that goes in effect in July, 193J. We're doing parent and community trainings. Since we went remote in March through now, today is May 14th, we have trained 287 folks have been attendees to our trainings online. That is fantastic. We are really pleased that our districts and our schools are continuing with their efforts to move forward with suicide prevention. We also offer ongoing technical assistance and support. 
And we have an anonymous online behavioral health screening on our website. So this is a resource you can provide to your faculty, to your parents, and it's a way to take an anonymous self-assessment to see if you might be struggling with a behavioral health issue. There's also one that parents can take on behalf of their child. We also do upstream awareness activities. So we have an annual 5K and family walk, as well as Stick It to Stigma sports events, and we'll touch on that in a bit. So the SOS program is a program of MindWise, and the program teaches students how to identify signs of depression and suicide in themselves and their peers, while training school professionals, parents, and community members to recognize at-risk students and take appropriate action. We know that using SOS, 90% of schools have seen an increase in students seeking help for themselves or a friend, with 95% believing the program also reduced stigma in their schools. So some key features, it's affordable and evidence-based. So this is a universal evidence-based suicide prevention program. It's for middle and high schools. And on a national, it's in over 10,000 schools, and that's an underestimate, with at least 1.5 million students going through the program on an annual basis. We have materials and life-saving tools that has videos, discussion guides, there's a depression screening and response slips to seek help. There's a faculty training, includes a training video and associated educational materials for faculty and staff. There's annual refresher materials. So again, universal. So you're targeting either the entire eighth grade, the entire ninth grade, 10th grade, but there's other videos and lesson plans to do it with that grade, maybe at another point of time, or to do with supplemental grades. You know, you learned about this program in ninth grade, we're now doing a mini lesson in 10th, 11th, or 12th. And there's also parent education. So there's in-person and there's an amazing online portal that you can send out to your parents that walks them through the program, teaches them risk factors, warning signs, and what their role is as a trusted adult. The so mindwise.org, I have the link on the bottom of this slide. You can go to their website, check out some preview videos, and there's a lot of materials on the website that will help increase your awareness of what the SOS program is. So when we're doing our implementer trainings, this is where we're helping train the core champions in your building that are gonna help deliver the program to students, help train your faculty and staff, and then help with the outreach to parents. So they're learning the student education and screening, how to actually follow up with students, what does it look like to deliver the program in the classroom? And then for the faculty, you know, really having them understand the need. What are risk factors and warning signs? And what should they do when they're concerned about a student? This is where we're assisting with looking at your current policies, uh, protocols. What is your plan and what is, who should be contacted when concerned about a student? And then how to outreach to parents and community partners. Really, you know, what do we do? How do we communicate? And then how do we collaborate with our community-based resources? So from the student side, you know, the goal is to increase knowledge and adaptive attitudes about depression, encourage individual help seeking and help seeking for a friend. We're reducing stigma, engaging parents, faculty, and school staff as partners. And then again, encouraging community-based partnerships. The key teaching message for both the adults and the students is act. How do you act? How do you acknowledge that you're seeing signs of depression and suicide in yourself or a friend and that it's serious? Care. How do you let your friend know that you care about them and you're here to help? And then tell. Tell a trusted adult. Similar for the adults, how does anyone in your building or district um, know how to acknowledge? How do you see signs of depression or a suicide in a student and that it's serious? How do you show them that you care? You know, how do you let the student know that you care about them and you're here to help? So this includes doing role plays, looking at different case scenarios with the goal of having our faculty have the, the same common language. You know, what are risk factors, warning signs, what are precipitating factors, as well as protective factors. And then when they're doing the tell piece, how can they bring this information forward? Follow your school protocol and tell your mental health contact. From the classroom side, 
you know, the program is done usually in one classroom period. You can split it up into several, and this is part of the larger training to teach you how to do this. So the program's introduced to the students. There's a video and a discussion. Again, you can preview kind of promo clips of the videos on the mindwise.org website. Students complete a questionnaire, a screening form, and this is not diagnostic. It's a brief screen for adolescent depression. It is not diagnostic. And there's also a student response form that simply says, I would like to talk to someone I do not need to after what we learned today. All students complete that, and it's a way to kind of flag someone that might want to come forward and talk, either about themselves or a friend. You collect the forms and there's giveaways and newsletters, again, all in the portal that we're providing the license for. And then we're following up with students requesting help and that are screening in. The faculty staff training. So we're training your core team on how to do the faculty staff training. We are able to come in and help, you know, maybe your first few times doing this with all faculty, but the goal is sustainability and is to train your champions, your team, and your building to be able to hold these trainings you know, throughout the year to meet the requirements of the um, legislation. So there's a slide deck, there's a video, there's a discussion guide, there's multiple activities on um, how to act, there's guidance on reviewing your school policy, and you actually want to review your school policy with your faculty in the training. And then we recommend that the principal administrator and mental health staff answer questions, review protocols, and just talk about what activities are being going on across the year that supports suicide prevention. The train the trainer. So this is the four hour to full day train the trainer that is really going to gear up your team on being able to champion the SOS program within your school and district. So we go over the program, what does it look like for students in the classroom? You know, what does follow-up look like? How do we plan for SOS in our school? How do we actually do the faculty staff training? We actually look through the materials for engaging parents and coming up with ways that we can actually engage our parents in our communities. And then we review the portal itself and we give plenty of time to answer um, any questions. So like I mentioned, we are doing webinars and right now we are doing implementer trainings. We're breaking it out into four one hour sessions and then we're doing training trusted adult series, which is two one hour sessions. We're also going to be adding trainings on other topics such as self injury and other kind of related risk factors for suicide. So all that information you can find on our website, connorsclimb.org under the educate tab. I mentioned some of the upstream activities that we're doing. You know, one of them is our Connors Climb 5K and Family Walk. So we had to change it. It was supposed to be in May. And fingers crossed, we're going to have it in September on the 27th. Regardless, if we can't have it live in person, we are going to do a virtual 5K. So you can find information about that on our, our website. It's a great way to get your youth involved. We have a lot of sports teams that do it together. It's very student driven. It's one way we raise funds to support our efforts, but then also to spread the word around wellness, resiliency, health. We also have something we're calling Stick It to Stigma. So this started off as hockey teams coming together and saying, hey, we wanna do something. And we started figuring out, okay, you know, how do we message that you, know, you can care for each other on and off the court, the field, the ice. So we came up with the Stick It to Stigma and this was in collaboration with the UNH women's hockey team, as well as the hockey teams from Exeter and Berwick Academy. And they're expanding. It's not just for hockey. This could be, you know, kick it for stigma or softball. You know, and the, the goal is to empower teams to come together with the acknowledge care tell message and to engage coaches, because we know that coaches are really key trusted adults in our youth lives. So that was a lot in a short amount of time. Again, I encourage you to reach out for more information. You can find us at connorsclimb.org. My email is candace.porter at connorsclimb.org. And we look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you and have a great day.